Science! Welcome to the Science Asylum. I am Nick Lucid. I'm sure many of you notice seasonal changes year after year. Come to think of it, you're probably so used to them you don't even think about them anymore. Unless they're, you know, in your way or something. Those types of changes are different depending on where you live. There isn't a whole lot of variation in temperature in the tropics. It's warm sometimes and hot other times. It never really gets cold. It makes more sense to discuss a dry season and a rainy season. The Arctic areas are mostly just cold all the time. Parts can even go months straight without any sunlight. In the temperate areas though, you basically have four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Plants bloom in the spring, it gets hot in the summer, trees lose their leaves in the fall, and it gets cold in the winter. But why? Why does this happen? Oh, oh, it's because Earth is closer to the sun in the summer, right? Oh, no. Actually, here at 42 degrees north latitude, we're further away from the sun in the summer. 3.3% further away. Wrap your mind around that. So why is it so much colder in the winter? Because the Earth is tilted. It doesn't really matter how far away the tilt has moved us from the sun either. Again, at 42 degrees north latitude, I'm only tilted about 2,100 miles further away from the sun in the winter. That might seem like a lot, but the Earth is 93 million miles from the sun. So 2,100 miles is only about two one thousandths of a percent, which is much less than the 3.3% we get from orbiting the sun. And we already said that didn't matter. What the tilt of the Earth does is it changes the angle at which light hits the ground. There's a shallower angle in the winter, so the light is just sort of grazing the ground. In the summer, though, the angle is steeper, causing the light to hit the ground more directly. What does that have to do with anything? Doesn't the Earth get the same amount of light regardless? That's actually a really good question. The energy you get from the sun is not the same as the energy the Earth gets from the sun. Energy is something you receive as an amount, kind of like money. First, you want to know how often you're getting it. Knowing you're getting $1,000 isn't very useful. Is it 1000 per year? 1000 per month? 1000 per week? A thousand per second? A thousand per second would be pretty awesome, actually. It matters! When it comes to energy, we usually measure it per second, which is where the watt comes from. It also matters how it's being distributed. Is it just you receiving a dollar per second? Or your entire town? If it's your entire town, then you are probably receiving less than a penny. When it comes to energy, we usually measure per square meter. If we consider both of these things, then we'll be measuring joules per second per square meter, or watts per square meter. This is what we call intensity. Ignoring complicated things like clouds and other weather patterns, if the Earth were flat and facing the sun, there would be 1,365 watts per square meter hitting the surface of the Earth. Slap a simple atmosphere in there and that goes down to about 1,000 watts per square meter because the atmosphere absorbs some of the light on its way in. Fortunately, the Earth isn't flat. On the winter solstice, you are tilted as far away from the sun as possible, which means the light is spread out over the widest area. Less energy per square meter means the intensity is lower. On the summer solstice, you're tilted as far toward the sun as you ever will be. So the sunlight you're getting is more direct. More energy per square meter means the intensity is higher. This graph is a rough estimate of the intensity reaching the Earth's surface at noon here in Detroit. This is a very temperate area. The intensity range is about 530 watts per square meter and it doesn't drop below 415. This is what the graph looks like for the Arctic Circle. You can actually see the intensity reach zero on the winter solstice. That day literally has zero sunlight at noon. The light at the Tropic of Cancer looks a little different. Notice the graph is flatter in the summer, showing the intensity is more consistent than it is in the winter. The whole graph is a lot more squished than the one for Detroit, with only a 320 watt per square meter range. That's a lot less variation. Making our way to the equator, things get a little weird. The light is actually maximum during the equinox, because that's when the equator is pointed directly at the sun. And it's minimum during the solstices, because that's when it's farthest away. What we're seeing here is the gradual transition from the northern to the southern hemisphere. When the north is in summer, the south is in winter, and vice versa. North, south, north, south, north, south. See? They're opposite. The ultimate point to this is that while the earth is always receiving the same amount of energy from the sun, the summer people are getting more of it than the winter people. So how well do you handle your seasonal extremes? Let us know in the comments. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy.